So we have spent a lot of time talking about high-grade serous and even endome high-grade endometrioid tumors, but we realize that it's a heterogeneous. And certainly fallopian tube and peritoneal are included. Uh, but Rob, I want you to tell us about this subset called low-grade serous ovarian cancer and how that differs in both a molecular and sort of a clinical sort of opportunity. Yeah, so yeah, low-grade serous we think occurs in about 5 to 10% um, in the, of the new ovarian cancer patients. Um, it looks to be a, a disease that is um, reflective of this, um, of of the uh, non-P53 generated type pathways, uh, mostly MAP kinase and PI3 kinase pathway. Uh, there's, there are some P50, patients that have P53 mutations, but they're frequently mixed uh, high and low grade serous, but it's clearly a different disease. It has a different biology, it has a different um, uh, 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 natural history. Mm -hmm. um, Slower and, growing. Yeah. Yeah, um, and interestingly, in the studies we've looked at this, at least retrospectively, the progression-free survival is not too dissimilar from, uh, from high-grade serous, but the overall survival is much longer. So, so there's something about it um, from the molecular characteristics that we, um, you know, that, we, that, we, that has driven it, this particular biology. And so we were very excited to start to dig into this and to separate it from high-grade serous so that we can start to focus on it as its own entity. And so the trial that was reported here by, Dick, by my... Uh, Before we get to yeah, that, I okay. want to talk about yeah. the differences. Yeah. So are the, are, is ovarian cancer hard to image, Michael? Is it, I mean, is it, is it hard to image? Is it like a lung tumor where we can, you know, put some calibers on it or... You're trying to set me up? I am trying, <laughs> I'm trying to get you to teach the audience that when it's, it comes to, bio, when it comes to biosimilars, yeah. The, yeah. the regulators say you better study lung cancer because it's easy. Right. To measure. This is hard. They don't say, oh, let's do it in ovarian cancers because those CAT scans are easy to read. And that's why we use placebos and blinded independent central reviews. You're absolutely right. And Carcinomatosis it's, it's, is not easy. So, and and it's, even, it's particularly be difficult with low grade because we oftentimes see uh, cystic and calcific lesions yeah. as the metastatic disease. And sometimes under therapy, when we see responses, we still see calcific cystic masses. So you don't even really know, is it going away? Like how do you measure a lesion that has a solid cystic and, so and a calcific component? Yes. So Very tell difficult. us about the molecular biology of these tumors. We know the molecular biology of high-grade serous, P53 and BRCA, genomic instability. Go ahead. What, what about low-grade serous? So that's, you know, I think it really evolved over the last five to ten years. It's clearly a separate disease. If you compare it to high-grade, high-grade obviously has ubiquitous P53 mutations. Uh, abnormalities in HRD, we've already talked about that. You don't see any of that in low grades. Right. In fact, P53 sometimes is used as a biomarker to distinguish yeah, the two. Instead, what you see is KRAS mutations. You see um, multiple mutations that activate the MAP kinase pathway. And that looks like a driver. And that's really the genesis of this whole effort. And so and we, have, we have therapeutic it. targets in the ras raf yep. mec erc yep. MEC inhibitors. Uh, I want to mention that Rachel Grisham, uh, presented a study at the International Gynecologic Cancer Society of a MEK inhibitor called benimitinib uh, versus physician's choice chemotherapy. And the, exactly like Forward One, a drug that worked, had a response rate of almost 25%, but was not better than an active comparator. Okay? And the endpoint, of course, was blinded independent central review because, again, you can't you can't, there's no placebo because one patient's getting a pill and the other patient's getting IV chemotherapy. So there was a second low-grade serous MEK inhibitor trial presented at the ESMO 2019, GOG 281. Either one of you tell me about it. Yeah, so GOG 281, really nicely designed trial, randomized patients um, with low-grade serous. It was not molecularly selected. Any mm -hmm. patient could go on and randomized to either trametinib, which is a MEK inhibitor, compared to physician's choice treatment, not just chemo. So there were five different options that patients could be treated with, letrozole, tamoxifen, um, weekly paclitaxel, topotecan, or pegylated liposomal doxorubicin. And in the binimitinib Milo trial, there was no hormone. That's no correct. hormone. That's, hormone. That's right. right. Yeah. And, and, and so this did add, you know, our sense was that the hormones, right, are better for these patients. So it, we were more excited about this trial in some ways because we had that option. Okay. Okay. Had that option. So they were randomized one to one. The primary endpoint was progression free survival, also looking at things like toxicity, quality of life, response rate, overall survival. Um, and, you know, spoiler alert, it was positive. 
Yeah, and there's also one in, you, in this trial uh, to distinguish from, my, from the Milo trial is that the crossover was allowed. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah, so, but the end point is progression-free survival. Progression-free survival, yeah. but mm -hmm. the patients and, were allowed to crossover. And were cross hormones over. better than chemotherapy, like you said? They were. How much better? Um, I think response rates to letrozole were somewhere around 25 percent. Or no, sorry, 13 percent. 13 percent. And the tamoxifen, not as much though. I think it was a zero percent, zero point zero. That's percent what, response zero. Rate. what was notable, <laughs> and, and I'd love to hear your opinion on yeah. it, Brad. Was that the response rate to pegylated liposome with doxorubicin was two percent? That's right. Yeah. What was it in your study? Over 20. Yeah. yeah. So how's so, that possible? Well, did you that, get that, that, a, that, a, that a biased <laughs> <laughs> observer? Okay, in an open label trial, in a disease that's hard to measure could have a different result in a blinded independent central review. How's that possible? I, so you can say, I get it, that, that, that letrozole had some activity, half of what chemotherapy had in Milo, yeah. but had some. Um, I, think, I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I don't mean to say one trial was better than the other. Uh, I say it takes two trials to convince anyone of anything, and these trials are in contradiction. And I could, I could give you an alternative hypothesis. Maybe you had high grades in your study. So in our study, to your point, we had uh, independent pathology review by your pathologist. Correct. Well, there's to, the problem. So, <laughs> so, so no, I, you're I, right. And, and, and we had central review for 281 as well. That's right. Yeah. And, and so, but I think the take home message is, again, that clinical trials design matters. But I think that this is an active class of agents because both trials, if you look at the progression free survival of both trials, Milo and 281, Basically, the PFS curves overlap. Absolutely. The only thing that's different is the control, control arm. arm and the way that that control arm was assessed. So I'm, I'm not really sure that one is positive or negative. I would hope that the NCCN and others would recognize this class of agents I do too. as an opportunity. I do too. Yeah, this is, a, this is a disease because of the long post-progression survivorship. We end up going through all of these agents. Yes. And so Twice. we need Twice. options. Twice. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Katie Moore says. We need yeah. these options. So the other thing that was interesting, because of the cross, that's why I mentioned the crossover, was that when we looked at the efficacy in the crossover, we less. still saw... It's still it was less, though. It was a little less, less, but it was 15%. But the, but the PFS was like 10 months. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's still, you know, I mean, we need this drug. Like, yeah. We do. The this class of drugs. Class of drugs. Yeah, we need this class right. of drugs. I mean, I think the study, you're right, the studies were contradictory because of the control arm, but I also think they were consistent in that they showed efficacy. Yes. So I, I mean, agree with you. I feel like, I feel really like the like, NCCN should, I'm just going to say, I hope, I think the NCCN should put it on compendium right. so we don't have to Two fight a. for, and, for and our patients. You know, I, think think are, I think it's already being used. I mean, we, we've used oh, it. Oh, we've oh, oh, been yeah. using no, it. It's label difficult label to get reimbursed yeah. with it that is, level it is. of yeah. But one thing that I think, you know, getting back to the molecular biology of the tumor, both of these, these studies have pretty robust TR components coming. And so, um, so in the myo, we've reported that, yeah. and yeah. there was a KRAS predictive biomarker. Yeah, but what, so the, the idea is that we've learned that it's not necessarily just KRAS, it's KRAS specific mutation. That's true. So G12 we, see, we see different G12, so the G12D, the common ones, we don't see as great of an, as a disc, discriminator, but the G12Ds, we do see, I mean, uh, V's and C's, V's and C's, we see um, a difference. And, and that in, may be related in, in to the- 239, yes. it was phospho -ERK. It That's was right. downstream. Right. It was yep. a very good marker. Well, but we're better at biomarkers now today, I think. Yeah, so level. it's really, it's, it's great. Fun, it's, huh? yeah. it's fun, huh? Yeah. It's fun. It's, it's fun to uh, realize that ovarian cancer is heterogeneous. It's fun to understand biomarkers. And it's fun to give our patients, when I say fun, satisfying. Yeah. Fun's not the right word. Satisfying to help our patients with targeted therapy.